Hi, my name is Tom Miner. I'm a chemistry teacher here at Dayton Christian Schools. Uh, I've been here at Dayton Christian off and on over 40 years now, and uh, I love God and I enjoy teaching chemistry. To me, uh, chemistry is the study of God's creation. The topic today that I'm making this uh, video on is how to make a solution quickly. So, you know as you read in your book, in your chemistry book, how to make a solution, there are three factors um, that affect the, the rate of making a solution. So the three factors you read about were heating, stirring, and surface area. And so what I want to do is actually give you some examples of those things and make some solutions for you today to see how those things uh, affect. Over here, I have a solution of uh, <clears throat> a copper 2 sulfate, a pentahydrate a solution, and you can see I'm running out. So I need to make some more. So in the stock room, I have copper 2 sulfate crystals that are like this. And uh, you can see um, that they are a rather large um, crystals. So I could either use those, or I have other crystals here that are um, a finer uh, crystal. So if I was in a hurry, what do you think I would use? The big ones or the small ones? Well, of course, the small ones. And if you don't know why I would use the small ones, if it was just intuitive, I'll tell you in a second why the smaller ones are better. All right, so we said there's three factors, heating, stirring, and uh, surface area. So here I have a, a stir plate that also has a heater on it. I think you can see, uh, if I turn this heater on, that the red light comes on when the heater is uh, working. And so I could uh, take some of my crystals and put them in solution and turn the heater on and uh, they would begin to, uh, uh, to dissolve quick or more quickly than if I just left it at room temperature. But uh, the next thing was stirring. And so uh, this could add some crystals. Um, this used these and so normally I would weigh out the exact amount I want but for this demonstration I'm just going to put some in and so I'll get my stirring rod here and start stirring. Well, you know, I don't really want to stand here and stir this because it's going to take about a half an hour for it to go into solution. So I have an easier way to do it. I'm going to take this uh, stirring bar and I'm going to put it in here on the stirring plate. And uh, that stirring bar is actually a magnet. And I can turn this motor on, which controls um, another magnet and a stirring plate, and so I can let the stirring plate stir that for me. So chemists uh, often have several things going at once, and that's one of the things we do to save time is we can use the stirring plate. And you can see that the crystals that well, I just put in are already dissolved because it is both being heated uh, and stirred. Now, now, if you haven't read it yet, you will be reading about different concentrations of solutions. And so when I want to make a particular concentration, I use this. Do you know what the name of this is? And so this particular flask is a 500 milliliter flask. And there is a little line up here on the neck of the flask that tells you when you're exactly at 500 milliliters. And so when I make up my solution for class, I want a particular concentration. Uh, this concentration is 0.1 molar solution. And so what I would do is I would take um, uh, some water. I can either use tap water or sometimes, uh, if I'm more particular, I use uh, DI water, uh, deionized water. And uh, I would put some water into my glass. And you don't want to fill it all the way up. You just want to put some water in it. And then... Um, and then we would add our, our solid uh, that we wanted. And again, I would have it weighed out uh, quite specifically for exactly how much uh, I want for the concentration of the solution. For now, we're just going to put, oh, this is two scoops. All right, well, let's make it more fun. Yes, let's put in two scoops. And, um, all right, and then I don't want to stand here stirring it for a long time, so I will put in a stir bar. I'll use a little one for this one. And I'll put it on the stir plate and turn the stir plate on, and uh, it begins to stir it for me. 
You might notice that I have some of the solution on the neck of the flask, and so you always want to rinse any uh, solution down um, the neck that might be there, so that when you have your final dilution, you have all the salt in it you want. So, what have we done so far? Well, we've talked about heating something, we talked about stirring something, and we did mention about a vol volumetric flask. Do you remember there was a third thing I said uh, that determines the rate at which a solution is made? Remind me what they are again. What was the first one? Heating. The second one was stirring. What was the third one? Do you remember? Do you remember it from your reading or from the board? And it's called surface area. So large particles like these that I showed you earlier don't have much surface area. They're very big particles. And you can only dissolve what's actually touching uh, the solvent. The, the solvent. The solvent is what we put the solvent into. This is better because uh, uh, it's smaller particles, and so it has much higher surface area. So I have a burner over here, and um, uh, it's lit. I don't know if you can tell it's lit from there or not, but it is lit. And uh, I, I can show you that it is by, if I reduce the amount of air through it, you'll see that it has a yellow flame. But I don't want a yellow flame, I want a, a nice, uh, clear, burning blue flame. And uh, so if I took these metal tongs and held them over the burner, would this catch on fire? And of course the answer would be no, it's just metal, it's just steel, you don't expect steel to catch on fire. In fact, steel can't burn, right? Well, not like this it can't burn, but here's a package of steel wool. You probably have steel wool somewhere in the house or in the garage that you use to clean things. And so here's a steel wool pad. And the steel wool is very fine particles of steel. How close do I need to be? Can you see that how small that is there? Now, what if I took this steel and held it over the flame here. And the answer to the question would be, can it burn? Well, if I held it over the flame, you see indeed it does burn. And um, if I get it warm enough and kind of blow at it, you see I can get the flame burning pretty brightly. So steel can burn if you have it um, a small enough surface area. And I'll put that in the sink now before I catch something on fire up here. But the reason I'm doing this for you is because I have a very interesting demonstration that I've been showing my students over the years. I have something that has very, very fine surface area. Watch this. Can you see how small those particles are? See, just a, 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 like dust, okay? They're so fun, okay? So I'm going to brush off what I have in my hand, the wastebasket. What if I took this, these really fine particles that have now huge amount of surface area because they're so, uh, they're so tiny. It's like if you wanted to put some uh, sugar in your iced tea, would you put it in a sugar cube? Or would you put it in granulated sugar? Or would you put it in powdered sugar? Well, the sugar cube doesn't have much surface area. The table sugar, the granulated sugar has more surface area, but the powdered sugar would have the most. And again, if you want to drink your iced tea now, you don't want to wait for a sugar cube to dissolve in a long time. So, this is very, very fine surface area. We found that the, um, that the uh, tongs didn't burn very fast. I think my flame just went out. But we saw that the uh, steel wool burned faster. Now what I want to do now is take and, and I want to see how does the, um, uh, this fine powder I just showed you, let's see how uh, it burns, all right? So watch carefully. I'm just going to sprinkle a little of this powder over top of the flame and let's see what happens. Ah, did you expect that to happen? All right, uh, if there were students in the room, they would always say, do it again. 
All right, so I'll do it again. So again, I just sprinkle some of this powder over top the flame and you can see the very fine surface area reacts very violently. So, how, what are the three factors that affect the rate of solution? Uh, the answer is heating it, stirring it, and then increasing the surface area. I hope you enjoyed the videotape. Thank you.